Hello there. So I wanted to make a quick video about keyboards, or more specifically gaming keyboards. Uh, too many times in my life have I seen friends or just the average gamer go about buying their keyboards completely wrong. Uh, they're buying the wrong keyboards for the wrong usage. Uh, so for keyboards, well we, we all know what a keyboard is what we use on a computer to type. Now, these keyboards, they're all different. There are mechanical keyboards, optical keyboards, and the new magnetic keyboards. Now, I'm not going to include membrane because, actually, why not? I'll, I'll include membrane too. Alright. So, the most popular keyboard as of right now, or it has been, is probably mechanical keyboards. These keyboards have been around for the longest times, well actually I would argue membrane, but they have been the most popular for the longest times. Um, they're what you always think of when you hear that clickety clackety sound of some pro Fortnite player, you know, grinding away at his builds. So. <coughs> I think that's what people, a lot of people go for, and they are, like, the off-brand ones, they're relatively cheap. They're like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, maybe 40 bucks. Uh, but the problem is, for gaming in this era, you might as well say optical switches are now the minimum. So let me explain. Mechanical switches, they work uh, with physical contact as you can tell from the name mech, mech right mechanical so I'm not gonna be the best at drawing so here's a visual image <coughs> now I know there are different types of mechanical uh, switches linear tactile quickly we're not gonna get into that I'm only gonna get into the functionality of mechanical switches as a whole and how it impacts gaming specifically gaming now you see how mechanical switches they use contact uh, physical contact you know, this is animated right here. There's a physical contact between this part and the metal pin right here that registers one key press. Now, what's the problem with this? Physical contact, right? Out of the box, it's going to feel great, but over time, this will wear. With friction force, this will wear out, right? And at one point, it won't be as responsive. Same thing as membrane keyboards. So mechanicals, they're not bad immediately, but over time they will get worse and they aren't the fastest switches. Now f for an optical switch, it is essentially, it's virtually the same design here, except we get rid of this metal pin. All right, here's the little uh, key, key um, rod, whatever it is. And this is your PCB. Your PCB has a little ray of infrared light shine right through here. So the moment this key stem passes through or disrupts this infrared light, this ray of infrared light that registers as one key press. Now think about it. That is way faster than physical contact. We're using light. We're using light speed to determine how fast a key press is. Now, some of you guys might be saying the difference is negligible. No, it is not. Uh, there have been tons of tests out there, especially with the Razer. I'm pretty sure Razer made a test. It's about 30 milliseconds faster. I think you'll see here. Um, yeah, optical switches, the Razer ones, but they're technically the same thing right 30 milliseconds faster that is superior in gaming especially in games like competitive shooters like Valorant or CSGO when you need that 30 milliseconds you know that's gonna help so much and for me transitioning from a mechanical to an optical keyboard or optical switches I felt a huge difference it basically feels like um, but the difference is like 
I'm, I virtually have no input lag, right? I'm doing what my fingers want to do. But, but, optical keyboards are not perf perfect. There, then, we're talking about magnetic keyboards. Magnetic keyboards with analog functions. So magnetic switches combined with analog functions, such as uh, customizable actuation points. That is the closest, I think, as of right now, we'll ever get to perfection of direct correlation of what our fingers want to do and what is displayed on the screen. So magnetic switches, they, were, they, are, they have the same design, again, but it is a bit complicated. There is a magnet inside the, the, the switch, which then uses, I'm pretty sure it's a hall sensor, it looks like that, and it measures the relative distance accurately of where the magnet is. And that can offer as, well, as I said before, analog, right? Analog functions basically allow for multiple um, key registers in at multiple actuation points. So with the ability to measure accurately how far this magnet is away from the sensor, you can say, we can say this is, I don't know, 0.6 millimeters, this is 0.4 millimeters, and this is 0.2 millimeters. You can say at 0 0.6, when it reaches 0 0.6, that counts as, I don't know, going forward. But you go, then it says when we reach 0 0.4 millimeters, you go backwards. And you can say when it reaches 0 0.2 millimeters, it goes to, I don't know, you fly up or you fly down, or you go to the right. Obviously, that won't be so useful in gaming because uh, that's not, it's pretty much going to mess you up more than it's going to help you, but that's what analog function is. So with that comes the new and, be, and the new and glori glorious function rapid trigger. So essentially within mechanical, optical, and membrane switches, when you press down on a key, right, it'll register it as one key press at that actuation distance. <clears throat> However, you'll have to lift that key back up to where it was registered. Let's say it was it was registered around here. Or no no, that wouldn't be it. Just an optical. So let's say it's just an optical switch. This is the light. <clears throat> this is where it was registered. Let's say that's 0 0.6 millimeters. Obviously that's pretty low for that's pretty fast for an optical keyboard. So this is just an example. Don't take my word for this number. Alright. 0.6 millimeters, you push the key down, but then you have to raise the key 0.6 millimeters back up. But rapid trigger allows you to press that key 0.6 millimeters down, but the moment you let go of that key, the moment it rises just a little bit, which with analog function, again, can be customizable. You can say 0.1 millimeters, that's exaggerated, but 0.1 millimeters you release that key, it cuts off that key press. So this basically eliminates all, like it virtually eliminates all input lag. You'll ever, like the human mind or eye will ever be able to register. It's unreal. And this will be most effective in games like CSGO or Valorant because this will change strafing mechanics completely. You'll be able to get away with things you never should have been and you'll have like these micro movements so fast that you'll throw your energies off super quickly. So that's why magnetic switches are so expensive and combined with the analog function just makes it, you know, one of the highest demanding, highest demanded keyboards on the market. Uh, a popular brand would be Wooting, their Wooting 60HE, <coughs> used by many professional gamers, but as we all know, it's out of stock always and it costs a hefty price. But there are other alternatives. I know SteelSeries and Razer have implemented their rapid trigger functions into magnetic switches with analog function. But I just want to let you guys know that there is another keyboard, a smaller brand, brand that goes by Drunk Deer. Now I know this may seem funky, but if you look up reviews, they have essentially the same thing. Of course, not as good as Wooting, 
it'll never be as good as rooting but it's the closest you'll ever get for 129 bucks now that's a steal all right with rapid trigger magnetic switches with analog function which is adjustable action point whatever they want to call it <coughs> you get rgb and these if you look up the reviews they sound amazing so here's a demonstration for you you see how you press a key down but it has to reset at a certain point a magnetic switch it resets the moment you let go of that key no matter how far you press it down <clears throat> now I wasn't gonna mention this but membrane keyboards are the lowest of the lows uh, these are the keyboards you know you find in your school computers they use rubber essentially and they use I'm pretty sure physical contact as well to, uh, register key press now this is super unreliable because as we all know rubber does wear out way faster than anything right at one point your keys are gonna feel like mush it's just gonna stick to the keyboard once you press it down it's never gonna come back up it's horrible all right that, I, I, there are a bunch of keyboards out there they're called membrane uh, mechan me membrane mechanical hybrids that's just a scam all right there there's a marketing gimmick to like sell some easy money make some easy money profit huge it's just a membrane switch with a little metal piece in, in the middle and it just makes the mechanic it, it virtually imitates the sound of a mechanical uh, switch key press but it's just a membrane keyboard so do if you ever see membrane mechanical hybrid or whatever membrane hybrid don't go for it right if it has membrane in there it's a membrane don't get a membrane keyboard those are things of the past they're not worth it anymore especially for the prices nowadays i think some of these membrane hybrids are still going for like 70 bucks where you can get an optical keyboard from tazar on amazon for like 20 bucks so bottom line is a conclusion Opticals, optical switches or optical gaming keyboards are the minimum. They use infrared light to calculate a key press. Magnetic switches are it's basically like the next level, right? If you're really taking gaming serious and you want the most um, out of your gameplay, go for magnetic switches. As I mentioned, Drunk Deer, I think this is the cheapest keyboard you can by as of right now with the rapid trigger function so just want to get that out of the way and make sure there's no confusion about gaming keyboards because as as again in gaming we want to prioritize input lag right we don't want any input lag we want the most minimal input lag and although that comes from other things like graphics cards cpus you know keyboards mouses they all affect they they, they still count as um external factors for input light, especially when you're displaying things to your monitor, right? So we just want to reduce that human input to display latency and with that and keyboards, different keyboards and mouses can help with that.